What if I told you that Africa just did it again? Yes, you heard that right. While automakers across Europe, the U.S., and Asia are still struggling to solve the age-old problem of charging infrastructure, Africa has quietly dropped another bombshell on the global automobile industry. A second self-powered car, running without traditional fuel or external charging, has just hit the market, and the industry? Absolutely shaken. This isn't just an innovation. It's a revolution. The global shockwave. The release of the first African self-powered EV was already dismissed by critics as a one-off miracle. But now, with a second model unveiled and ready for consumers, the noise can no longer be ignored. Car dealerships in Johannesburg, Lagos, and Nairobi are already reporting interest that outpaces even Tesla's early Model 3 craze. Lines of customers, investors flying in from abroad, and media vans crowding the streets— the African automotive scene had become the center of the world's attention. Meanwhile, panic spreads across Europe's auto giants. In Germany, executives from BMW and Mercedes are allegedly holding emergency strategy sessions. In the U.S., whispers say General Motors and Ford are quietly monitoring the situation with growing unease. Because this isn't just about a new car. This is about a technology that could erase their business models entirely. The car itself... So, what makes this new African EV so powerful? Unlike conventional electric cars that rely on charging stations, this vehicle runs indefinitely by harvesting ambient energy, similar to its predecessor, but with major upgrades. Design, sleeker than before, with aerodynamics rivaling the Tesla Roadster. Power system. Instead of batteries that deplete, it integrates an advanced form of radio wave energy capture, constantly feeding power to the motor. Range, effectively unlimited, as long as radio frequencies exist in the environment. Affordability, early reports suggest it could cost under $20,000, making it accessible to the very markets long ignored by traditional EV manufacturers. And here's where it gets even more interesting. Insiders say the new car has an open-source blueprint, meaning other African innovators can build upon it. Imagine dozens of startups across the continent producing their own versions industry reaction. As news spreads, reactions pour in. Tech bloggers in Silicon Valley call it the nail in the coffin for charging stations. Oil industry analysts warn that if such cars scale globally, demand for gasoline could collapse faster than anyone predicted. And Tesla? While Elon Musk has yet to make an official statement, sources claim the company is already exploring partnerships with African engineers to understand how this technology works. Could Tesla actually end up licensing African innovation instead of competing against it? The bigger question is this. Is the West ready to admit that Africa may now be leading the future of cars? The political earthquake. It wasn't long before the second African self-powered EV triggered a political storm across the globe. In Washington, senators openly questioned whether U.S. automakers were falling behind. A leaked memo from the Department of Energy revealed concerns that this technology could undermine America's energy security by slashing oil demand and rendering the nation's massive EV charging investments obsolete. Meanwhile in Europe, the EU scrambled to discuss new trade regulations. Some politicians proposed tariffs on African-made self-powered vehicles, labeling them a threat to economic stability. But critics quickly fired back. How can Europe preach about free trade and sustainability while trying to block the cleanest car in the world? And then there's China. Beijing sees the writing on the wall. Already dominating the global EV market, China has begun quietly reaching out to African innovators, offering funding, manufacturing facilities, and global distribution networks. If China strikes a deal first, it could position itself as the exclusive exporter of Africa's revolutionary technology. Oil nations in crisis. The biggest losers? Oil-rich nations. Saudi Arabia, Venezuela, and Nigeria face a terrifying possibility. What if cars no longer need oil ever again? Analysts predict that within a decade, global oil demand could plunge by 30 to 40 percent if self-powered EV scale. In response, OPEC officials have launched emergency studies. One insider revealed that some countries are already discussing diversification strategies, fearing a collapse similar to coal industry's decline. Imagine this. An African invention, not Western sanctions, not climate protests, but African innovation itself, 
bringing the oil empire to its knees. The inventor steps into the spotlight. Amid the chaos, the mysterious inventor behind the second EV finally appear before the press. Standing in front of a gleaming silver prototype, he delivered a message that stunned the world. This technology belongs to humanity. Africa will not repeat the mistakes of the past, where our resources were stolen and our inventions buried. This time we lead. The audience erupted. For decades, Africa was painted as a consumer of innovation, never the source. But now, with the world watching, that narrative had flipped. A new global race. With two self-powered EVs already shaking the system, the race is no longer between Tesla, Ford, or Volkswagen. The new question is, which country, which company, which alliance will embrace Africa's breakthrough first? Investors, scientists, politicians, even military strategists, all are circling around Africa. Conferences are being scheduled in Johannesburg, Harare, and Nairobi. Suddenly, Africa isn't just a future of resources. It's the future of technology itself. And here's the shocking part. Rumors suggest that Africa isn't stopping at cars. Reports hint at self-powered buses, drones, and even aircraft prototypes quietly being developed in hidden labs. The revolution is just beginning. Tesla's counterattack. As whispers of Africa's expansion into buses, drones, and even aircraft grew louder, Tesla's boardroom in Austin, Texas went into full-blown crisis mode. Elon Musk, never one to shy away from competition, took to social media with a bold message. Tesla will not be left behind. Innovation doesn't stop here. It accelerates. Within days, Tesla announced an emergency roadmap, an accelerated release of the Tesla Semi Gen 2 and a mysterious energy breakthrough project codenamed Helios. Analysts speculate this is Tesla's attempt to match Africa's self-powered technology with their own version of wireless or perpetual energy systems. But here's the catch. Tesla's project is still theoretical. Africa's self-powered EVs are already on the roads, shocking customers in real-world tests. Africa's silent partners revealed. Behind the scenes, major African economies were aligning. South Africa, Zimbabwe, Nigeria, and Kenya signed what's now being called the African Tech Accord, a confidential agreement to protect and develop self-powered technologies together. For the first time, Africa wasn't negotiating from weakness. It was negotiating from technological dominance. And then came the bombshell. Reports surfaced that African innovators had already partnered with Asian battery giants, not to create batteries, but to repurpose their global factories into self-powered engine assembly plants. That means within just a few years, millions of these cars could hit markets worldwide. Wall Street in shock. When news broke, Wall Street froze. Shares of major automakers like General Motors, Toyota, and Volkswagen tumbled overnight. Oil companies shed billions in value. But in a twist no one expected, African tech startups began receiving record-breaking investments. Venture capital that once poured only into Silicon Valley now started flowing into Harare, Lagos, and Nairobi. Financial analysts now whisper of an upcoming African Silicon Valley, a hub where self-powered innovation could shape the future of global industry. The unveiling of the next prototype. Just when the world thought it couldn't get crazier, an invitation leaked online. You are invited to the world's first public test flight of Africa's self-powered aircraft. Location undisclosed. Date soon. The internet exploded. Could it be real? Could the same technology that powers cars now lift an aircraft in disguise? Without fuel, without batteries, without limits? The stakes were higher than ever. This wasn't just about the future of cars anymore. It was about who would control the skies. Governments on edge. The leaked invitation for Africa's self-powered aircraft test flight sent shockwaves through governments worldwide. In Washington, the Pentagon convened an emergency meeting. Leaked memos revealed deep concern. If this technology proves scalable, U.S. air dominance will be at risk. In Brussels, the European Union held closed-door discussions about technology containment. Meanwhile, Beijing quietly dispatched envoys to Africa, seeking exclusive trade deals before the West could catch up. But the African inventors, led by Maxwell Chikambutso's circle, remained silent and unbending. No licenses, no patents to sell, no corporate buyouts. Just one phrase repeated again and again. Africa will lead its own future. 
Media frenzy erupts. The world's media went into overdrive. CNN called it the Wright Brothers moment of the 21st century. BBC compared it to the birth of the Internet. Social media hashtags like hashtag self powered skies and hashtag Africa takes flight began trending globally. Airline industries panicked. Stocks of Boeing and Airbus nosedived, while private jet companies scrambled to deny that their billion dollar business models were about to collapse. The day of the flight, the secret location finally leaked Victoria Falls Airstrip, Zimbabwe. Thousands gathered, while millions watched live streams from around the globe. The atmosphere was electric. African flags waved proudly. Children wore shirts with slogans like, The future is ours. Then, silence fell as a sleek. Silver aircraft rolled onto the runway. Smaller than a commercial jet, but larger than a private plane. It shimmered in the African sun. No fuel lines. No roaring engines. Just a faint hum, like the sound of flowing electricity. The announcer's voice echoed across the field. Ladies and gentlemen, you are witnessing the future. The aircraft accelerated faster, faster, until suddenly it lifted off. Smooth, silent, impossibly effortless. The impossible happens. At first, the plane circled the airstrip. But then, something shocking. The pilot climbed to 20,000 feet, then 30,000. Minutes turned into hours. Yet no refueling stop, no signs of power loss. Reporters gasped. Engineers in the crowd scrambled to calculate what they were seeing. Was this truly perpetual flight? Suddenly, the announcer declared, This aircraft has been flying continuously for 72 hours before this demonstration. What you are seeing now is not a test. It is proof. The world went silent. The panic after takeoff. The moment the self-powered aircraft stayed in the air beyond the limits of fuel or battery. The world realized something terrifying. Everything had just changed. Airlines feared bankruptcy. Oil companies began free-falling on the stock market. Military strategists warned, if Africa controls this technology, the balance of global power shifts overnight. But in the streets of Lagos, Harare, Nairobi, and Johannesburg, people danced. For them, it wasn't just an invention. It was liberation. Children shouted, Africa rises. Secret negotiations. Within 48 hours, envoys from the U.S., China, and Europe flew to Zimbabwe, demanding private talks. They offered billions for blueprints, patents, and licensing rights. But the African inventors, calm, resolute, responded with one line. The age of exploitation is over. This time, the future belongs to us. The world had no choice but to listen. The turning point. Weeks later... The first cargo test flight launched, delivering medical supplies across the continent without a single drop of fuel. Soon, passenger versions were unveiled, offering flights between African cities at a fraction of the cost of traditional airlines. Rural villages once cut off by poor infrastructure suddenly had access to the world. The promise of self-powered technology became undeniable. The global shift Tesla, Boeing, Airbus, and even oil giants scrambled to reinvent themselves, but Africa now led the narrative. For the first time in modern history, innovation wasn't flowing from the West to Africa. It was flowing from Africa to the world. The legacy, months later, under a night sky glowing with stars, Maxwell Chikambutso stood quietly beside the aircraft. Cameras flashed, crowds cheered, but his eyes were calm. Reporters asked him, what do you call this new age? He smiled and said, The age of freedom. The day humanity stopped being chained to fuel. And with that, the world entered a new era. An era powered not by oil, not by batteries, but by possibility itself.